Ready for a deep dive? We're really getting into it today. L'Art du Triomphe. Fascinating book, all about those cardinal virtues. Courage, justice, wisdom. You know, those qualities that just, they really stand the test of time. It's true, and this book doesn't just talk about them in theory, which is interesting. Mm. It really digs into how these virtues were, like, actually lived out by some incredible people in history. Mm -hmm. We're talking people whose actions were not only shaped by these virtues, but their actions, they actually went on to shape history. Okay, yeah, now I'm hooked, for sure. But where do you even begin with a topic that big? I mean, we're talking about, like, all of history. Right, well, the authors they start strong. They go straight into action using Alexander the Great as the example. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, the guy was out conquering the world before most folks even figure out what they want to do with their lives, right? Yeah, exactly. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Um, the book, it goes beyond just, you know, his skills as a military leader. They call him Alexander the Builder, actually. They really highlight his vision of a unified world, you know? Like, he wanted to build a legacy that wasn't just about conquering land, but about connecting people connecting ideas. It was bigger. So it wasn't just all about conquest, even though it might have looked like that. There was a deeper method to all of it. It's like we're seeing a different side to this like almost mythical figure. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, I thought this was really interesting. They actually have this quote where he's like reflecting on everything he'd done. And he says he didn't actually want to just be remembered for conquering. What he really cared about was was uniting everyone. I don't know. It definitely gives you a new perspective on him, don't you think? It does. And actually, it's kind of a sad story when you think about it, right? This is a guy who accomplished so much, but like the book talks about, he knew he wouldn't live forever, mm. especially as his health started to go downhill, you know, later in his life. Yeah, absolutely. And that awareness really comes through in how his story is told, right? It yeah. wasn't just about like how much of the world could he conquer anymore. It became about what he was going to leave behind. And that actually leads perfectly into the next virtue, which is adonation, yeah. unity. And the book uses two really different figures to talk about this, which I thought was interesting. George Washington and, believe it or not, Queen Elizabeth I. Wow. Okay, now that is not a pairing I would have seen coming. You have one person you know, forging a new nation. You have the other one fiercely defending an empire. What could mm -hmm. they possibly have in common? What they had in common was this immense pressure to create unity, to create unity under enormously challenging circumstances, right? Yeah. Washington, he had to try to unify a nation that was, let's be honest, still trying to figure out what it was, you know? And then Elizabeth, she was fighting so hard just to keep England together, to keep it strong against all these different threats, internal divisions, external threats. I mean, they both really carried the weight of leadership on their shoulders, just in totally different contexts. So it's more about the core skills of a leader then, mm. especially a leader in times of, well, turmoil, basically. Exactly, yeah. And something else I thought was really interesting, um, L'art du triomphe doesn't shy away from the tough stuff, like what these leaders had to sacrifice personally. They actually talk about how Elizabeth the Serf chose England, like literally chose her kingdom over her own happiness. I mean, she even chose not to marry this guy, Robert Devereux, even though it seems like maybe that's what she wanted and it was all for England. Wow. Choosing your country's well-being over your own happiness? That's serious commitment. It really makes you think about the sacrifices that come with leadership on that scale. You really have to give that much up. It's pretty intense. It really does. You know, it makes you wonder. Okay, so we've talked about action. We've talked about unity. And, well, now it's time to talk about a virtue that is just basically another word for boldness. Audacity. And who better to illustrate that than Ferdinand Magellan? Of course. Yeah. Right. This is where the adventure really kicks in. This is the first guy to circumnavigate the globe. We're talking serious guts. Mm -hmm. But the book... It doesn't just stay surface level with this story, right? Like, I mean, there were mutinies. There were points where they almost died. They even ran out of food, like, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, and that is where this book really shines, I think. It gets into, like, the psychology of a journey like that. Think about it. Facing the unknown every single day, battling constant doubt, losing your crewmates to starvation, to disease. I mean, it's just, it makes you see Magellan and his crew as real people. And most history books just don't do that. It's true. It reminds me of that saying everything has a price, right? Yeah. Like Magellan, yeah, he achieved this incredible thing, this thing nobody had ever done before, but the cost was high. And not just for him, for his whole crew. So it really makes you think, where's the line between ambition and, you know, what could happen because of it? Maybe it's time for a slightly less intense virtue after that one. So the book, it goes on to talk about the idea of building. And the example they use is, well, it's kind of unexpected. They talk about Mary Talbot, who was a scientist who studied Ants? Yes. Ants. 
So Talbot, she spent her career trying to understand how ant colonies work, like these complex systems, how they build those incredibly intricate structures, how they talk to each other, how they work together. It's fascinating, honestly. I, I mean, yeah, I get how that connects to building, but how does the book like go beyond that? We're not just talking about you know, literal building here, right? No. Right, exactly. So they connect Talbot's work with ants to the incredible vision it took to build those huge medieval cathedrals. Like, can you picture the amount of work that went into those? The years of dedication, the sheer number of people it took to build something that massive and beautiful and long lasting, you know, awe inspiring. It's true. And it wasn't just one person's vision. Those cathedrals took generations mm -hmm. to build, right? Mm -hmm. And ant colonies, those don't just pop up overnight either. Mm -hmm. So it's this idea of patience and collaboration and this understanding that even the small things, even things that seem insignificant, can add up to something amazing when you're working towards a bigger purpose. It really makes you think about things differently, yeah. you know? And uh, the thing is, they don't stop there. This book, it goes even deeper. There are all these other virtues that they talk about. And each one, it's like they find these really interesting people from history to to illustrate them, you know? Okay, yeah, I'm ready for more. What's another one of these, like, surprising pairings? What other virtues did they dig into? So they spend some time with the idea of chevaleresque, you know, that chivalrous spirit. And get this. They use Miguel de Cervantes to to kind of embody it. Cervantes, wait, like Don Quixote? I mean, he wrote the book, but I wouldn't exactly call him a knight in shining armor. Right. But here's the thing. Cervantes, he actually lived a pretty crazy life. Full of adventure, yeah, but also a lot of hardship. He was even captured by pirates at one point. Can you believe that? Held for ransom for years. They even tortured him. But even after all that, he never lost his spirit, you know? He always held on to this... The sense of idealism. That's some serious resilience yeah. for sure. And I guess it makes sense that that would come out in his writing, right? All those stories about these knights, these quests for justice and, and honor and all that, even though the world he was living in, it wasn't exactly living up to those ideals. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. And L'Art du Triomphe, it really points that out. Like Cervantes, through all these characters he created, especially Don Quixote, he's reminding us that it's still possible to believe in those ideals, even when it feels like, you know, everybody else has given up on them, even when the world feels kind of cynical and jaded. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's a good message for sure. Mm -hmm. It's like he's saying, look, just because the world isn't always chivalrous, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that we can't be. We can still choose to be better. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from chivalry, we shift gears a little bit. The book takes us to a virtue that requires something totally different, contemplation. And to talk about that, they use, well, who else? The ultimate Renaissance man himself, Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci. Okay, I'll bite. This guy was a painter, a sculptor, an inventor. I mean, talk about a busy guy. Where does quiet contemplation even fit in with all of that? That's exactly what makes him such a good example for this virtue, actually. The book... It digs into this idea of da Vinci as this, like, endlessly curious person, always driven to understand things and not just, you know, on a surface level. He wanted to really dissect things to observe how they worked deep down. You're talking about his anatomical drawings, right? Yeah. The ones where he was, like, actually dissecting bodies so he could figure out how the human body worked. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And it wasn't just anatomy. He applied that same like intense observation to everything, his art, his engineering, his inventions. It was like he saw the world as this this web of patterns and connections. He just had this amazing ability to find those connections everywhere he looked. It's like he was able to see beauty and knowledge everywhere, hmm. which honestly it kind of makes you want to like pay more attention to your own surroundings, doesn't it? You know, like what am I missing? It really does. And speaking of seeing things in new ways, the book takes us from Da Vinci to this really fascinating story about the discovery of penicillin and the person at the heart of it all, Dr. Mary Hunt. Penicillin. Talk about a game changer. That discovery changed the world of medicine, like completely, right? Yeah. But what's so special about how it was discovered? What makes it a good example of creation? So the book, it emphasizes a couple of things. First, it talks about how important it is to be really, really observant. And then, this is interesting, they talk about how important serendipity can be. You see, Hunt, she wasn't like actively searching for a miracle drug or anything, but she was very observant, especially when it came to mold. Wait a second, mold, like the stuff that grows on old bread. That's the one. She noticed that there was this one particular type of mold that seemed to stop bacteria from growing. 
And keep in mind, this was all happening during wartime, right? Yeah. So everything was really chaotic and people were desperate for, you know, anything that could help. It just goes to show sometimes the most important discoveries, they happen in the most unexpected ways. Like they say, chance favors the prepared mind. Hunt, she was open to those possibilities, even in something that most people would just, like, throw away, you know? It's true. And that's what I love about this book, L'Art du Triomphe. They don't just tell you these stories. They really make you think about these deeper connections, you know? And believe it or not, we've only just scratched the surface here. I mean, this book, it goes on and on. They talk about all these other virtues, generosity, grace, resilience, truth. I mean, you name it. And each time they find these amazing people from history to to help bring those ideas to life. It's true. And it's amazing how, like, hearing these stories, it really makes these virtues feel a lot more... I don't know, real. Like these aren't just things in a philosophy book, you know, these mm -hmm. are things real people have actually lived. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not just like concepts, you know, they're lived experiences with all the ups and downs, the challenges, the successes, the whole nine yards. And what I think is really cool is that this book, L'Art de Triomphe, it doesn't just leave you with this like feeling of awe for these historical figures. It kind of pushes you to find those same qualities, those same virtues in yourself. Yeah, definitely. And they actually end the book with this like really thought provoking question. They ask, we've explored how these virtues manifested in the past. The question is, how will you embody them in the present? And what impact will you choose to have on the world? Okay, that's how you wrap up a deep dive, right? It's not just a history lesson. It's like a call to action. Like, what kind of ancestor do I want to be? What are people going to say about about what I did like 100 years from now? It really makes you think. It really does. You know, it's kind of humbling when you think about it that way. And the thing is, we all leave a legacy, right? Even in the smallest things, the little everyday interactions, maybe that's the whole point. Like, we all have the potential to embody these virtues, to make a difference. It's like that quote, uh, Joan of Arc, she said, I am not afraid I was born to do this. And it wasn't like arrogance or anything. It was just this really strong sense of purpose. Like she knew she had to align her actions with something bigger than herself. You know? That's really what resonates with me about this book, I think. It reminds us that we all have a role to play in how history unfolds. You know? We're not just bystanders. We all make choices every single day. And those choices, they have an impact. They ripple outwards. So I guess what we're saying is, Find your virtue, take action, and go make some history. Day. I love it. Who knows, maybe someday somebody will be deep diving into your story and they'll be talking about how you inspired them.